Hello, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. Marcio Marinho here. And this is the place where we talk about everything related to software engineering and technologies in general. In this video, we're going to take a look on how to improve our Java constructors. Why, you may ask? It's because constructors, they are extremely important, but they are usually overlooked. Good constructors can make your code more flexible, more reliable, more readable, and make our application to become better overall. I'll be showing to you guys a few examples on the patterns people usually use whenever designing their constructors, and also a better way of designing a classes constructor. I took these ideas and examples ideas as well from the Effective Java third version book. It's from Joshua Block. There is a link in the description below. You guys can take a look as well. So without further ado, let's deep dive in the video. So my first example here, as you guys can see, I have a class called person1. It's a class that is a description of a person, has first, last name, height, weight, foot size, and body type. The first pattern people use is called telescope constructor. Why? That's because of this pattern here. We have several fields, and then we start filling in the fields, okay? Uh, first name, last name, then we invoke another constructor, passing first, last name, and the next field, which is height. The next constructor, we do the same thing, calling the next constructor, passing weight, and we keep going on this chain until we reach the last constructor, which will receive all parameters, and then we are going to set those parameters into the object. This class has one good thing, because it uses final fields, then nobody else will be able to change or to mutate these values after the object creation. But this pattern here is really hard and confusing, and I'm going to show you guys pretty quickly. Let me create a new test. It's going to be JUnit4. That's fine. And let's say test public void should create person number one. Um, I can have person one. Person 1a equals new person 1. And then here starts the problem because from the client point of view, nobody knows what is inside this class. So we have to go back there and see the definitions. There is no indicators of what's going on in there. I know because I wrote this class and I know I can say, okay, this is John Doe. And that's it. We have these two parameters constructor, but we are also allowing people to do the following new person one. People can also use the complete constructor chain, which takes all parameters, but it is really hard to know what's going on in there. Uh, I know that it's they are two strings, and I know because I wrote it's a height now, then I know that's the weight, I know the foot size, and I know the last field is the body type. It was kind of easy to me because I wrote the class, but anyone else would struggle with this structure because we have nothing here. That's still a bad pattern, okay? Now let's deep dive in the second example. Let me close this one, close this, this one again. Now the second pattern is using a Java bean style, which is a class that has getters and setters. As you guys can see here, so this one is more open. And the first problem here is that we can mutate the state because we need to create the object and then we can assign a new value and we can assign a new value in any point in time. As I'm gonna demonstrate here, we can create person two, person two A, that's gonna be person two, it is new person two. At this point in time, we have created an object in an inconsistent state because we, we are simply saying, okay, this is a new person, but this person has no information whatsoever, and we have to fill in that information now, as I'm going to 
show you guys. It's going to be set first name. Let me copy this because I'm going to use it a lot. <laughs> it's going to be John. Uh, set last name though. Now I need the height 187. I also need this person's weight 98 kilos. I also need this person's foot size number 12. And I also need this person's body type. Which I'm gonna say this person is fit. So as you guys can see, it's a bit problematic having all constructors structured this way because we are simply opening this class and its instances to get modified during runtime after the object's creation. I know that there are many Java frameworks that they rely on this feature, such as Hibernate, Spring, and a few others, which is totally fine, you guys, and we can still use those frameworks and still writing on this style as well. But whenever we can avoid using this kind of structure, we should. Which brings us to the third example. As I'm gonna demonstrate to you guys right now, I'm going to create a new class, which is gonna be, again, a person number three. And person number three is gonna have the same set of fields, but I'm gonna make them final as well, because that's a good practice. So nobody can mutate them. And here is the trick. We're going to create a builder because we're going to be building our class step by step. And at the end, we're gonna have an object with a consistent state. Let's do it. Public static class builder. And let's duplicate those fields because we will need to fit the builder before we fit the enclosing class. Now a constructor for our builder, uh, let's assign first name and last name as our initial state. So first name equals first name and last name receives the last name. Now we're going to create a builder method for each other property in here. We're gonna have height, which is gonna return a builder as a value, then height receives val, and then we'll return the builder itself. So we continue doing that. Builder weight receives an integer value, weight receives value, and return the builder. Builder uh, foot size, yeah, foot size. Then I'm gonna assign the foot size and return the builder itself. And in the last field, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Uh, that's gonna be body type. This time, it's gonna be a string uh, builder. Body type receives value and return this. Okay, now we have our basic structure for our builder. One last thing here inside the builder is to create a method build. Uh, we're going to build something here and what we're going to build is the actual class. So for that we need a private constructor on the enclosing class. It's going to be person number three which we receive a builder and that is what we're going to call in here. the new person, just a quick fix here. Yeah, that's it, new person three, returns a new person three, passing the builder. And now we are going to simply find the builder variables into the person object. See if it's builder, uh, 
last name. This uh, height receives builder height. This weight receives builder uh, weight. This builder foot size receives builder foot size. And the last field is body type. Pretty cool. So we done it. Um, we are ready to go. Now let's do it again. The same exercise. Let's instantiate a new person three. Inside our test, uh, public void should create person three. So this time we're gonna call person three. Person three equals to new person three dot builder. And then I'm gonna pass those parameters, John and Do. And now I can simply pass all the other parameters, but this time on a very descriptive way, because I can now invoke those methods to pass those parameters. So my height or John, John Doe's height is 187. I can also pass his weight, which is 98. Um, his foot size is number 12. His body type, which is fit. And in the end, we can simply build on that object, which is going to bind the builder variables into the person um, variables. Okay. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. That's a pretty simple example, but that can be extended to many other cases. Please uh, don't forget to click on the like button on this video. Also click on subscribe and on the notification bell. So you won't miss any of my videos. Okay. I'll see you guys next time.